That setting on your camera ISO is basically fake and based on almost nothing. Now, if you're just learning about exposure and cameras, don't even bother with this. Just press stop, go to our main channel, check out one of the playlists with tutorials so you can kind of figure that stuff out. But if you're a camera nerd and you're interested in how this stuff works, let's go back in history before ISO existed. In the early days of cameras, people, cam manufacturers made film and people would put it in their cameras. And it was kind of hard to figure out exactly how much uh, flash or aperture you needed to use shutter speed to get the film properly exposed. Like that was a major challenge, something we don't even think about today. So the way they started to tackle this is some people would use photodiodes and light meters, not unlike this one, to kind of check the light in a scene. And because film was all different, the companies who were making these light meters started actually testing film and assigning values to the film. So if you switched films, you would know, oh, you needed a little more shutter speed with this film to get the right exposure. But there were a bunch of different companies kind of making up these measurements and standards, and so it depended on the light meter that you had. Somebody decided to standardize it, and that was the American Standards Association, the ASA. So 100 kind of became the base that you would use in, on a nice sunny day, and 400 was mm, indoors, really. And that continued on up until 1974, when the International Organization for Standardization, ISO, took over those standards without changing them too much. And that's kind of where we are today. Like the same values are in our camera from going back to the early 40s when ASA took it over. Like that really hasn't changed in more than 70 years, which is insane because we don't use film anymore. But that's one thing I like about the photography community is we're based in this legacy of history, but it's also something that I really hate because there's nothing about ISO that's standardized anymore. It's now completely made up. Let's take a look at three pictures. This picture was taken at ISO 400, 1 15th of a second, and F4. This picture was taken with those exact same settings. It's a full stop darker. What changed? The light didn't change, only the camera changed. That second shot was taken with this camera, the new EM1X, and its ISO is completely off. If you take a picture at ISO 400, it's basically at ISO 200 like quite literally based on the ISO standards. So why are they called standards? Like standardization is right in the organization's name and yet they are a full stop off, but it gets worse. Here's a picture taken with the X-T3 and those exact same settings. So Fuji and Olympus seem to be the worst offenders, but literally every camera manufacturer has been lying about their ISOs. Why do they do this to us? Let's go back to when digital cameras first came out. Every camera sensor can absorb a certain maximum amount of light. And if any more light hits that sensor, it won't be able to read it. And that's why you get highlights that eventually clip. So camera manufacturers kind of figured out, okay, how much light can this handle compared to ISO? Let's just call this ISO 100 because that was the sort of base ISO that everybody was accustomed to. It wasn't really ISO 100. When I look back on my first digital camera, the Canon 10D, its base ISO was actually 113, even though in the camera it was labeled ISO 100. So it was cheating the other way from modern cameras. It was higher than the stated ISO. And I never noticed it because I mostly used auto exposure. Most of us use auto exposure and so it doesn't really matter. But if I were to plug it into a light meter, stuff would actually be a little bit exposed. Not a lot, a tenth of a stop isn't too much. You probably wouldn't even notice that. But then as camera manufacturers kept improving sensors, those sensors began to be able to absorb more and more light, essentially using a lower and lower ISO. For some reason, they kept calling the base ISO, ISO 100. And so now you have cameras where ISO 100 is more like ISO 50 or even ISO 40. And why wouldn't they just call it ISO 50 or ISO 40? After all, they're based on actual standards. I have a theory about this. I think it benefits them to overstate their ISOs because when people are comparing their cameras, they'll often take a shot at ISO 3200, they'll take a shot with their old camera at ISO 3200, and they'll think, oh, this looks better at ISO 3200, I guess the sensor technology is improving. That might not be the case. What has actually changed is the new camera ha is labeling ISO 1600 as ISO 3200, 
And so the changes seem much bigger than they actually are. And once we had one camera manufacturer kind of lying about the ISO, it would kind of screw over every other company if they were honest about it because their ISO 3200 would have so much more noise than somebody else's ISO 3200. So ISO standards are not standards at all. All manufacturers seem to really make this up. Some manufacturers like Olympus and Fuji seem to fib a lot more than other manufacturers, but they're all lying about it. Reason number two, ISO is fake on digital cameras. It is not a physical change to the process. Like if you change the shutter speed, the shutter moves at a different speed. If you change the aperture, the iris of the lens physically moves, but nothing physically changes when you change ISO. In fact, most of the time, the camera captures the exact same image in the exact same way. And then after the picture is taken, it uses your ISO setting to just determine how it's going to post process that picture. If you pick a super high ISO, then it just takes the values of the sensor red and multiplies them to make everything really bright. The ISO you choose in your camera is just a post-processing instruction exactly like dragging the exposure slider in Lightroom. It is just digital gain. In fact, it's ridiculous that we still call it ISO. We could just call it gain or brightness because that's what it is. And in our Blackmagic Studio camera, it doesn't call it ISO. It just calls it gain and it measures it in decibels. And that actually makes a lot more sense. If you don't believe me, here's a picture taken at ISO 25,600. The exposure is fine, right? Here's a picture taken with the exact same shutter speed, the same aperture at ISO 400. It's completely black. But because I used the same shutter speed and the same aperture, the sensor itself got the same light. If I take this into Lightroom and I use my technical presets to increase the exposure of the picture, look at them side by side now. They're identical. In fact, most cameras nowadays are what DP Review calls ISO-less. The ISO is just completely arbitrary and decided in post. And you could, if you wanted to, just use the base ISO for everything and then adjust it up later in post. It doesn't really make much sense to me because then as you try to preview your pictures, they would all be black. But what I do is I don't really sweat the ISO too much. Knowing it's completely arbitrary, I usually just leave my cameras on auto ISO, at least when I'm shooting raw still. If I'm shooting JPEGs or video, yeah, you kind of need to nail the exposure. Another point, the upper ISO is completely made up. Like a camera manufacturer offering an upper ISO of 25,000 or a billion, they're just saying, hey, we can multiply the numbers in your picture by 1,000 or 10,000. That's the only difference It's just how high are they allowing you to multiply the values that the sensor gives out. There is no reason that there is any upper limit. They can make it a million or they can make it a billion. I don't even know why they put an upper limit. But the really upsetting thing is when manufacturers market a new camera and they brag about the new upper limit. Now that you know it's completely arbitrary and just the product of a multiplication math problem, it's not really an indication that the sensor is actually more sensitive. They're just letting you multiply it by a bigger number and you could do it in post exactly the same on your old camera if you wanted to. Here's another reason ISO is fake. The lower ISO could be completely eliminated. Most cameras nowadays have a low ISO of 100. That is actually more like ISO 50, but why not offer an ISO of one or two? This camera, the EM1X, has what's called a digital ND filter built into it. And if you turn on this digital ND filter, it'll basically double your shutter speed or go up to 32 times your normal shutter speed. So instead of shooting at one one hundredth of a second, you'd have to shoot at one third of a second. It's great for taking long exposures. But the technique it's using could be used to create arbitrarily low ISOs. Shooting with an ND32 filter on here is exactly like shooting at ISO 3. And that's actually really useful, not only for producing images that have really zero noise, but also for taking long exposures. The way it works is it just snaps a series of photos with the electronic shutter with almost no delay between the photos and then it averages them. I've covered this technique before and it works perfectly in post and it exactly simulates the values you would get at a lower ISO. So even though every sensor has some physical lower ISO where it can't absorb any more light, thanks to modern electronic shutters with very little delay, you could make an arbitrary low ISO of 0.1 or 0.001. And that would be fantastic for being able to make long exposures. One more thing, 
ISO is the name of an organization that does a lot of amazing things to standardize technologies all around the world. But photographers, we just know them as a sensitivity setting. <laughs> and it's really offensive to ISO that they're all about standardizing stuff and camera manufacturers have decided to just arbitrarily change ISO to whatever they want it to be. ISO is completely made up. We should just call it gain or brightness or something else. But camera manufacturers stick to the tradition of ISO from the film days, even though they then manipulate it to probably try to make their images look better at a given ISO. It makes no sense to me why we continue to do this, but we do. If you like this stuff, click subscribe. Chelsea and I have a lot more videos coming where we dig deep into the photography world. And if you're just starting out and learning the basics of photography, of course, check out our other videos, but also check out our video book, Stunning Digital Photography, the number one book in the world. You can look it up on Amazon or you can get it directly from us at northrop.photo. Follow up questions, add a comment down below and I'll check it out. Thanks.